Welcome to this new episode of uh, uh, talking about the America's Cup with uh, professionals that are um, related to what's happening uh, uh, every day during the races. Today we are with uh, Pietro Casalone. Uh, he's uh, an engineer and uh, uh, moreover uh, specialized in foil design. Welcome Pietro to our channel. Hi Matteo, um, I'm happy to be here. I just finished my PhD in hydrofoil design and optimization, so I'm glad to be here to talk about this important topic for the America's Cup. Thank you to, to be here with us, because uh, uh, since what's happening in those days, uh, uh, I mean, you are the perfect person to have here. But you're not only an engineer, you are also a, a sailor. And uh, if I remember well, you sail with uh, foil boats. Yeah, I, I'm not a professional foil sailor. I mean, uh, my sail experience is almost uh, mostly on, on dinghies, like uh, Laser 4K, 29er. But uh, I, I tried foils and it's super funny, super fast. And uh, now I have my wing foil. So uh, every time uh, I have a spare time, I go on the lake, I try to fly a bit and it's very fun and fast. Oh, that's great. So you are the right person to mix uh, the theoretical part and the, practic and the practical part for, uh, for this argument. So, Thank well, you. <laughs> so uh, let's start from, from the base. I mean, uh, uh, we always see now on uh, the live races and whatever uh, foils, but let's go a bit deeper, but uh, let's keep it uh, simple for, uh, for, uh, for everyone from the audience. Uh, what are foils? and uh, how do they work okay so to keep it simple foils are the same thing of a wing of an airplane in fact they are wings they are just smaller because the fluid the the water is heavier than hair which is the fluid in which work the airplanes so the concept is the very same they produce a lifting force that lift the body up in this case, the hull of our boats. And uh, so the hull is lifted upon the free surface and uh, all the drag is reduced. Uh, and uh, also the comfort on board is very high because mm, you are decoupled uh, from the wave forces. So th the ride is very smooth and uh, the drag is re reduced. Um, Foils, when they reach, uh, when the boat reach a certain speed, they produce enough lifting force to lift everything up, and that's basically how they work. So it's the very same thing of uh, a wing of an airplane, but just smaller. <laughs> okay, great, great, great. And uh, uh, I think they also provide uh, like um, um, a resistance for the boat to to capsize or to when it's. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. They provide a restoring moment, and uh, this one is a function of the foil arm. So since the foil arm uh, is quite wide, it's quite extended, they provide uh, a lot of uh, restoring moment. Okay. And, uh, uh, foils, in fact, uh, so they do they have a range for uh, their um, uh, operational functions or they can work uh, limitless, let's say. They, they have a speed limit, uh, a condition limit uh, or, um, or no? Nice question. Um, the foils... Uh, have their own range of functionality. I mean, one foil maybe is designed for low speed or medium speed, and one other kind is maybe designed for more speed. So it usually depends on the surface, which means more surface, lower speed, less surface, higher speed. Then when you reach a very high speed, which could mean 40, 50, or even more knots, uh, it happens some problems related to the creation of hair around the foil, and that is called cavitation. And cavitation is a phenomenon when the water around the foil starts bubbling because the speed is too high and thus the pressure is too low. And when this happens, the foil loses the ability of creating a lifting force because it's surrounded by hair and not by water. So this phenomena is quite dangerous for the stability of the system, but also for the foil itself, because it induces vibration and uh, it can also damage the foil structure itself. 
Okay, so it, it can even damage the lamination of the carbon fiber and uh, and everything because of the yeah, yeah. Okay. If it happens for a long time and it's quite strong in magnitude, yeah, it can damage the structure and the integrity of the soil. Okay, okay, okay. So uh, what we've seen uh, in the um, uh, in the last days where uh, wind is a, uh, has been a little bit stronger, uh, speeds are been uh, uh, faster, uh, leaving apart a uh, mainsail uh, that got broken and whatever. Yeah, no, I'm unfortunately we, we are Italian, but we we have this kind of uh, uh, situation sometimes as Italians. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> but uh, so um, increasing of speeds instead of uh, the um, the previous uh, races and whatever created some kind of these problems during the races from what you've seen uh, from the um, from the races. Both the boats uh, a couple of days ago were going around fifty knots. They were uh, having uh, some problems to to lift from to keep to stay lifted from the water. In fact. Uh, so it's cavitation, in fact, this, uh, this kind of problem, or it can be other matters? Yeah, it's not only cavitation. It's another problem always related with the hair around the airfoil, around the other foil. But uh, the other phenomenon is called ventilation, and uh, it happens uh, for surface piercing uh, hydrofoil. So when uh, the foil pierces the free surface, it's possible that some hair from the top get uh, sucked down till the foil. And this is a phenomenon slightly different from cavitation, but in the end, the outcome is more or less the same because uh, you lose the ability to generate a lifting force because uh, the hydrofoil is surrounded by hair in the end. So both of these phenomena are similar. Mm, they start in a different way, let's see. Let's uh, say because uh, ventilation is only for surface piercing foils while cavitation can happen, whatever, if uh, the pressure goes low enough for the cavitation to trigger. Both of these phenomena are related to um, a change or a high angle of attack of the hydrofoil with the incoming flux of water, because a higher angle of attack induces a lower pressure field and cavitation is due to a lower pressure. So. Uh, if the hydrofoil is subject to a sudden change in the angle of attack, like uh, what happens uh, during a maneuver attack or a jibe, it's more likely that this kind of phenomena will happen. Okay, great, great, great. So now I have uh, uh, another question that uh, came up to my mind uh, while you were talking, because now we are talking about uh, how those boats are flying, uh, why they fly, and uh, why they can fall, but how uh, do they take off? In fact, how do they start to lift, uh, and uh, how it works uh, also with the um, geometry between uh, the foils uh, and uh, and the rudder? In fact, because uh, it also the foil, the, the rudder is a, a foiling surface at the end. Yeah, yeah, the rudder is a foiling surface indeed, and because uh, as a vertical part for maneuvering and an horizontal part of for providing lift. Uh, both the horizontal hydrofoils have uh, an actuator and a flap that uh, make it possible to change the, the shape of the hydrofoil, to change the amount of lift which is provided under different conditions. Because the lifting force change quadratically with the incoming speed or the boat speed. And as uh, when you do when you're doing a different speed, you have to adjust the foil geometry to guarantee always the same lift, which is equal to the boat's weight, of course. So you have you must have an equilibrium, at least in vertical direction, between foil weight and lifting force. So when you're going faster, you have to reduce the angle of attack of your hydrofoil or reduce the flap angle, which is a part of the hydrofoil uh, which can be regulated to change the shape of, of the whole wing. So like in a airplane, uh, you have actuators that uh, pull down or pull up the flap, which is near the trailing edge of the hydrofoil. And so the geometry is deformed and the lifting force, uh, which uh, 
the wing uh, provide uh, is different under different shape. So you have to regulate with your speed the, the geometry of the laser foil to always be in equilibrium with the weight of the boat. Okay, amazing, brilliant description of uh, of everything. Thank you a lot. So let's uh, <laughs> so let's dive a little bit in the latest uh, uh, till today. Uh, let's see in today race what will happen. But uh, uh, what happened to Luna Rossa uh, within uh, the moment of uh, his of the nose dive that uh, they did uh, was. Uh, for sure, and uh, with the knowledge you share with us, uh, one of the situation you told us uh, before, but how, uh, or better, not how, but why, instead of just uh, um, landing, let's say, on the water, they nose dived. Uh, what's been uh, the um, the problem, uh, the added problem in that situation? How a nose dive can happen? Yeah, nose dive can happen so caused by many factors. We also see in the past uh, like huge nose dive when uh, all the wing came out of the water. It was American magic. Yeah, th during the first regatta, Luna Rossa uh, fell down from the foil just after the first round. And it was uh, a very good regatta. The two boats were head to head. But uh, as soon as Luna Rosa turned the buoy, um, it fell from the foil. And uh, I think it was caused by cavitation in this case. Um, the boat speed wasn't too high. It was around 43, 44 knots. But probably uh, since the, the crash, the nose dive happened right after the maneuver, the, the jibe, because uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, it all began from... Uh, um, a problem with the main foil because uh, the nose dive happened when you lose you lose the lifting force uh, um, in that part of the boat because uh, if you lose the rudder uh, you will not nose dive but uh, you will inclinate in the opposite direction. So I think that uh, cavitation induced by um, a sudden maneuver or something too fast during the jibe. Okay. Thank you a lot, Pietro. It's been uh, a pleasure to have uh, all this information from you. Uh, I hope uh, that we will talk again on our channel uh, in the next future, since the America's Cup is not ended yet. We have uh, not one month, but 20 days. So thank you and uh, see you very soon. Thank you, Matteo. It was a pleasure for me. And uh, we hope to see more interesting races with Lunar Rose, of course. Uh... <laughs> Yeah, we uh, hope that uh, they stop to break the boat and uh, start uh, winning all the races, not one uh, and uh, the other one breaking something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We hope to be here to commend the finals. <laughs>